Strategy Management Series. Video number 71 Strategy Formulation. Step 6. Strategy Selection Internal External, i.e., Matrix. Welcome back to the Ready MBA series on Strategy Management. In our previous videos, we have been discussing strategy selection, the sixth step in the strategy formulation process. This step consists of identifying and selecting courses of action that a company may choose to achieve its strategic intent, mission, vision, and objectives. To help define those, the planning team can leverage generic strategies and strategic frameworks. Generic strategies are fundamental approaches that businesses adopt to gain a competitive advantage and position themselves effectively within their industry or market. Strategic frameworks are analytical tools that help the planning team visualize the specific conditions in which the company finds itself, and based on their results, enable the company to identify potential strategies to be executed. In our previous episodes we covered different groups of generic strategies such as Porter's Generic Strategies, Diversification Strategies, Integration, Cooperative and Acquisition Strategies, as well as Restructuring and Disruption Strategies. These generic strategies help businesses make strategic decisions about how they will compete in the market, allocate resources, and differentiate themselves from competitors. In this video we will continue reviewing different strategic frameworks to identify the most appropriate generic strategies to be considered by the planning team given internal and external market conditions. We'll explore another powerful framework for strategic analysis and decision making, the IE matrix. The IE matrix, also known as the internal external matrix, helps organizations evaluate and prioritize their business units based on their internal and external factors. Let's dive in and learn more. The IE matrix assesses business units on two dimensions, the internal factor evaluation, IFE, score and the external factor evaluation, FA, score. The IFE score reflects the strengths and weaknesses of a business unit, while the FA score captures the opportunities and threats in the external environment. These scores are plotted on a nine-cell grid, providing valuable insights into the strategic position of each business unit. On the horizontal axis, we have the IFE score, ranging from strong to weak. In line with the IFE matrix methodology, the lowest value is 1 and the highest value is 4, with the average being 2.5. The IFE score is determined through an internal analysis of factors such as financial performance, resource capabilities, organizational culture, brand reputation, among many others. This evaluation helps us understand the internal strengths and weaknesses of a business unit. In the video number 56 of this strategy management series, we thoroughly explained the process of conducting an internal factor evaluation and establishing the internal factor scores, which will subsequently be employed in the construction of the internal external matrix. On the vertical axis, we have the FA score, ranging from low to high. In accordance with the FA matrix methodology, the lowest value is 1 and the highest value is 4, with the average being 2.5. The FA score is derived from an external analysis that examines factors like market trends, customer preferences, industry competition, regulatory changes, and technological advancements, among some others. This evaluation helps us identify the opportunities and threats present in the external environment. In video number 51 of our strategy management series, we explained how to assess our external factors and calculate external factor scores. These scores are essential for building the internal external matrix. After calculating the IFE and FA scores for one or more products, divisions or business units, we can plot them into the grid. The IE matrix can be divided into three major regions that have different strategy implications. Region 1 is composed of the three cells in the upper left quadrant of the matrix. They are considered to be attractive businesses that the company should grow and build. These businesses have average to strong internal positions and benefit from average to high external factors. They should focus on investing in growth and market share. The three cells in the lower right quadrant of the matrix are part of Region 3. They are considered to be unattractive businesses where the company should harvest or divest. 
These businesses have average to weak internal positions with medium to low external factors. They should focus on divesting or harvesting their assets. Last, but not least, the three cells in the middle of the matrix compose region 2. They are considered to be uncertain, with a hold and maintain approach. These businesses have a weak internal position with a highly favorable external situation. Or they have average to strong internal positions in unfavorable external conditions. They may generate cash, but they are not growing very quickly. Or they may need a lot of investments to thrive. In such cases, companies generally take a selective and cautious approach. Let's explore the different strategic positions within the IE matrix and the corresponding strategies associated with each region previously described. 1. Grow and Build, Region 1. The business units in this region have average to high IFE scores, indicating strong internal capabilities, and average to high FA scores, indicating favorable external conditions. These units are considered to be in an excellent strategic position for growth and expansion. The strategies suitable for this quadrant include market penetration, market development, product development, horizontal integration, and forward integration. By leveraging their internal strengths and capitalizing on the external opportunities, these units can drive significant growth and increase market share. For example, imagine a software company with a business unit that has a robust product portfolio, a highly skilled workforce, and operates in a rapidly expanding market. To capitalize on the favorable external conditions, the company may focus on increasing market penetration by targeting new customer segments or geographies. It could also explore product development to introduce innovative features and expand its offerings. 2. Hold and Maintain, Region 2 In this region, we find business units with high internal scores but low external scores. These units have strong internal capabilities but face challenging external conditions. The recommended strategy for this quadrant is to maintain the current position and protect the market share. The focus should be on improving internal operations, cost efficiency, and customer satisfaction. Additionally, it's essential to monitor the external environment closely for potential changes that could turn threats into opportunities. Let's say a retail company has a business unit with a well-established brand, efficient supply chain, and a loyal customer base. However, the industry is experiencing increased competition and disruptive technological advancements. In this case, the company may need to concentrate on enhancing operational efficiency, optimizing the value chain, and investing in customer relationship management to maintain its market share despite the challenging external environment. Another situation, also in Region 2, is that of business units with high external scores but low internal scores. These units operate in favorable external conditions but face internal weaknesses, the decision to either grow and build or harvest, divest, depends on the organization's long-term strategic goals, available resources, and the potential for improving the internal capabilities. Let's say a telecommunications company has a business unit that operates in a rapidly evolving market with high customer demand. However, the unit suffers from limited resources, inefficient processes, and weak financial performance. In this scenario, the company may choose to invest in building the internal capabilities of the unit, focusing on areas such as talent acquisition, process improvement, and technology upgrades. Alternatively, if the internal weaknesses cannot be adequately addressed or if the company wants to prioritize other opportunities, a divestment strategy could be pursued. 3. Harvest or Divest, Region 3 Region 3 consists of business units with low internal scores and low external scores. These units face internal weaknesses and operate in unattractive external conditions. The recommended strategy for this quadrant is to harvest or divest these units. Harvesting involves reducing investments and focusing on short-term profitability, while divesting means selling off or discontinuing the unit altogether. For example, consider a manufacturing company with a business unit that struggles with outdated technology, declining market demand, and increasing costs. 
The best course of action for the company may be to harvest the unit by reducing expenses, streamlining operations, and extracting maximum value from the remaining assets. Alternatively, if the unit doesn't hold any potential for improvement, divestment may be the most appropriate strategy to reallocate resources to more promising business units. The IE Matrix offers a comprehensive evaluation of business units by considering both internal and external factors, providing insights into strategic positions and guiding decision-making. Its strengths lie in its holistic approach, allowing organizations to assess the relative attractiveness and strength of their business units. It helps in identifying growth opportunities, allocating resources effectively, and prioritizing strategic actions. However, the IE matrix requires a thorough analysis of internal and external factors, which can be time-consuming. Additionally, it may oversimplify complex situations and overlook important non-financial factors that could impact strategic decisions. That wraps up our discussion on the IE matrix. We hope you found this video informative and that it helps you in your strategic planning endeavors. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more educational content on business strategy. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.